And now, John Carlson's going to tell you where he's really at. John, lay it on. Australia's gift to the world of pop music. Joe is the writer, producer, and performer of our pop culture theme song. And he is a true friend of the show. And how you doing, everybody? This is your pal and fellow fan of pop culture, Steve Ludwig, welcoming you to another edition of Steve Ludwig's Classic Pop Culture, right here at planetludwig.com. Our guests is the brilliant John Council of the Beach Boys, Action Skulls, and, oh yes, the Councils. We recorded our interview four days ago as this show premieres, and John is one of the coolest, humblest performers you'll ever have the pleasure of listening to. So, let's lead into our interview with the lead-off song, Mainstream, from Action Skulls' first album, Angels Here. Action Skulls consists of John, Bangle Vicky Peterson, and actor musician par excellence Bill Mooney. So, I'll shut up now and I'll let the real talent take over.
Mainstream from Angels Here, the first album by Action Skulls, featuring the Bengals' Vicky Peterson, actor-musician extraordinaire Bill Moomy, and our guest, Beach Boys drummer for over 20 years, John Calsill. John has been taking us on our musical journey, a beautiful, glorious one, since the mid-60s, along with his family band, the legendary Calsills. As I mentioned, he's been drumming since 2000 with another legendary band, the Beach Boys. And now with Action Skulls, John, Vicky, and Bill take us on yet another journey, full of psychedelic, remarkable musical styles. It's my honor to welcome to classic pop culture the one and only John Cowsell. Hi, John. Hey, Steve. How are you? I'm doing very well. <laughs> well, I had to sit back. I was, I was blown away by that introduction. <laughs> well, it, hey, listen, I'm just reading what you've done, man. It's it's uh, what a career you've had. And I don't want to get into any big thing, but can you believe you've been doing this since the 60s? How fast it's gone? No, I didn't. I didn't. I definitely didn't think I would have a career that lasted this long in music. Definitely not. Well, I mean, it, it, it seems, though, your family was destined <laughs> to have this as, as your career. Do you Do you feel that way as well? Uh, you know, I grew up doing it, so I, I never wanted to become it. It just, it, I didn't pick it, it picked me, yeah. mm-hmm. kind of a thing. Yep. And I think that was a lot of it for for the youngest ones. Or maybe the older guys said, no, nah, I want to do this, I watch that on TV. You know, I mean, I saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan and I wanted to play drums, but we mm-hmm. were singing before that, so it was just, you know, around the kitchen table, hoot nanny, folk songs, whatever. Right. You know, so, um, it was just something we did. But uh, to have a career, and it's hilarious. Well, <laughs> so I, it picked us, and it took off. But I didn't really, I didn't drive the ship. So, well, you know, thankfully for all of us fans, you, it did become your 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 life. Um, you know, it's funny you mentioned the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan. <laughs> Um, my last name is Ludwig, and I saw Ringo playing Ludwig drums. I had never seen Ludwig drums before seeing, you know, Ringo play the drums. And I say, wow, that's my name, you know. So right away, I was a Beatles fan anyway before that. But I thought it was funny you mentioned the drumming on the Ed Sullivan show. Yeah, I was uh, I was curious if you were related to the Ludwig family. Uh, no, well, oh. they're obviously the rich members of the family that don't contact the, my brothers and me yeah. so yeah, yeah no I wish I were <laughs> but I'm happy with my, uh, I'm happy with no, my, but I, my I, that's all I play today still are Ludwig drums so yeah uh, you know if if you don't mind me asking I was going to ask this a little later on in the interview but um, what what makes a good drum set like how do you know as, as a drummer how do you know isn't any drum like any other drum what do you look for uh, tunability I don't really know. I, I'm not technically minded. I just know that some drum sets are easier to tune than others, and and uh, you know I like them because they look cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I listen. There's, there's yeah. a lot of great drum companies out there. Ludwig yeah. is my favorite, and yeah. it's 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 sentimental and family to me. Ludwig drums are just family to me. I got my first kit at Manny's um, in New York City. Mm-hmm. And uh, only because Ringo had them, and I got the same sizes, but all my drums were red sparkle. <laughs> I don't know why they just were. Um, <laughs> but it's more of a feel. But uh, but I don't know. Uh, there's great snare drums. Ludwig has a great catalog of snare drums, um, Black Beauty being one of the top-tier drums for any drummer out there playing any kind of drums. <laughs> and um, they have the Chief Superphonic, the Acrolytes. They have so many snare drums, metal wood, different configurations of hardware that make them sound different. In fact, I'm in the studio down here, and a friend of mine says, well, you, know, you got to get the tube lugs because the imperial lugs and the bow tie lugs um, create a, a ping in the shell, so you want the least amount of lug on the drum. Anyway, we don't need wow. to get into drum technology, but you yeah. asked me that question. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, yeah, um, it's really uh, the tuning of a drum that makes a drum sound good mm-hmm. and uh, and, and that's a personal choice as well. And what sounds good live, what sounds good recording. And most toms on all drums, I can make sound like toms. And so it's yeah. great. And then you yeah. got to have great cymbals and, 
yeah. <laughs> sticks to hit them with. <laughs> it's uh, such a pro- funny profession. The worst day of my life, I look at my hands and realize I have two sticks in my hand and I'm hitting things. This is a good life. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And but I do want to correct, correct you on the yeah. Beach Boy thing. I haven't been playing for 20 years drums with them. The first seven oh, years yes. I was your piano player. I, you, yes, I stand corrected. Absolutely. And I knew that. I should have just said you were playing with the Beach Boys for 20 years. Yeah, over 20, yeah. And what made you switch? But I have. I've been with them uh, 20 years now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, um, Crazy. As a matter of fact, John, I think I saw you with the Beach Boys in Englewood, and you were playing, still playing the uh, piano, the electric piano. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so it was years that ago. Version. Yeah. Woo-hoo. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, listen. I mean, the beat goes on with Action Skulls. Um, what I didn't mention yeah. in the intro, and I'm sure many of our most of our listeners know this, that you and, and Vicky are married. Vicky Peterson are married. Um, but mm-hmm. tell, tell us about Action Skulls. Action Skulls was formed uh, on a on a evening, I think it was, might have been Christmas Eve. No, it wasn't Christmas Eve, but it was around December 18th, some years ago. <laughs> I can't remember <laughs> to tell you the truth. Tell me about uh, it. But it started out with, when I used to be on Facebook occasionally, um, always ran across, you know, everybody knew Bill Mummy, people I knew who played, you know, my brother Bob and Robbie Sharp. And they said, oh, Bill came into the pub, but I'm always out of town, so I never get to hang out with anybody because I work for the Beach Boys, so I'm never home. Right, yeah. I said, oh, man, I want to I wanna meet him, you know. Kind of, he, he's iconic. He, he was my favorite. He's Anthony in the Twilight Zone. He's, yes. He's, he was a space traveler, him and Angela Cartwright. I mean, yeah. I, I loved them. Wanna... They were my age. I was watching kids be, be in great TV shows. Lost in Space was incredible. But what people don't know about Bill is how musical he is. And even even during the Lost in Space years, this guy would somehow initiate a, a musical scene in the show by yes. bringing a folk guitar on and singing there. One of his gigs was playing guitar and singing Hey, Mr. Spaceman by the, <laughs> the Birds. Um, by the... Uh, the Birds? their name? Oh, I'm sorry. The Birds, thank yeah. you. Whew, whew, I'm having a senior <laughs> moment. <laughs> I'm right with you. I'm and right with you. he played that in his Lost in Space suit and in, at the Wood Bowl, and he did that acoustic by himself. He, This guy writes so great, and so often he has never lost the fire of writing and, and making music. Uh, he's worked with America, with Barnes yeah. & Barnes. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's just, he's phenomenal. I and think 12, I saw him on 12, Facebook, and he reminded me yeah. of my brother Barry in his troubadour style of just, and so I reached out to him on Facebook and said, hey man, I'd like to play some brushes on one of your things, you know, it's the emoting, emoting sentimentality of my brother Barry, and he says, mm. oh yeah, well, you know, we can work that around. Long and short of it, the way it became, went to a party, a Christmas party, down the street from Angela Cartwright, and I knew where she lived. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew that Bill and his wife Eileen were going to be there, and Vicki and I were going to be there. It was a mutual friend, Peter Leinheiser's house, and we went in there, and, and it was fun. And I knew Bill was going to Angela Cartwright's house later on, and I had a big crush on Angela Cartwright. Who, who didn't, John? Kids, who didn't? People my age. <laughs> I mean, from, from Make Room for Daddy when she played Linda. Uh, you know, she was so five, cute. I yep. had a crush on her. Tell me about it. So I was five, too, so it was okay, or maybe a little younger. <clears throat> but we were at this party, and I jokingly pulled a Paul cow, so because Paul is always so funny, and he just makes people, like, snap their heads sometimes. And I said, in, in the room, I said, okay, and I made sure Bill heard me. I said, okay, i got to get going. i got to get to Angie's party, which is, like, four houses up the street. And I was just joking, and, Bill's, and Bill turns around and says, Eileen, oh, yeah, we got to get going. We're going to go up there. He says, well, we'll go with you. And I looked at him. I said, Bill, I don't know Angela. I was just joking. He <laughs> says, no, no, come with me. Come with us. And so Vicky and I got to go to Angela's house <laughs> and, and, and see all the Lost in Space people. Just It was so funny, man. It was awesome. And her sister Veronica was there. Anyway, yeah. so there's a piano in the room. And they have a gentleman who they hired to play for the evening, and he took a break, and we kind of sat there and just goofing around at the piano, and it was Bill and me at first, and then Vicky came over and started singing something, and and uh, 
it sounded really beautiful. And we said, we should start a band. I said, yeah, I got a name for it. I said, Action Figures. And <laughs> Bill has a, 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 a skull ring on his hand. He says, no, we'll call it Action Skulls. And Vicky rolled her eyes. She said, I'm not going to be in a band called Action Skulls. And <laughs> the what? long and short of it, he ended up doing it. We got together. We wrote some songs together. Bill mostly wrote them, but we, we participated in that and recorded them and, and made an album. And it was it was really great and a lot of fun. Oh, and was it ever and great. we had mm. Angels Here came out when the pandemic happened. Bill Bill wrote some songs, and he sent one to a friend uh, through an email, and I heard it. And and Bill, when we would send him a demo of a song, he would take that, dump it into his his studio and finish it with other instruments and stuff and send it back to us. We said, no, 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 that was just a, that was just a demo. We, we, we don't like our performance. We have to do this over. So when I saw that song that he wrote, that was so beautiful. It was called, um, it was the first song of the album. It was, um, mainstream uh, quarantine blues. Oh, quarantine blues. Oh yes. On the different yeah. world. Yeah. Or I, I can't exactly remember the name. There's so many titles, yeah. um, but, and and so I said to Vicky, I said, oh, let's do a payback. Let's go in the studio and just lush this thing out with backgrounds. And we sent that to him, and he sent us back nine more songs. Instead of laughing, he said, do the rest of them. And we did that. And Angels Here, uh, not Angels Here, but uh, A Different World came out of that. And mm-hmm. it's just an acoustic album, basically. And Bill's doing the leads, and Vicky and I embellished all the harmonies on it and bill added some on to on to that as well that's a beautiful album it oh just, my gosh so beautiful we did some bluegrass on that some ballad stuff some interesting eclectic it, things it, it, it's just so fun to work together and in fact we've just finished another album just now it's going to be called um from a running horse and that'll be out in about three months probably oh how great is that and, uh, mastering and who knows i'll tell you guys so okay yeah you can edit that any way you want <laughs> uh, i i i'm gonna i'm gonna keep every word john but i was going to say you guys do cross so many musical genres well in the two albums yeah. that you've done so far just incredible you know it's funny just to show you uh, or to uh give an example of bill's sense of humor on on the social distancing blues song he even mentions yeah. things you can do during the pandemic. You know, watch me, uh, watch Lost in Space featuring me. <laughs> you know, oh, I don't remember that, that line. That was fantastic. You know, and I, I think yeah, it's good we, that we he's added kinda... a background part right when he says that, and because the theme song was so we went we just said background. If you listen to it, you'll hear us do the the theme song. Um, from phrasing <laughs> so perfect <laughs> and I he mean, caught that yes catch up on reading watch TV baby lost in space featuring me listen to some music yoga's good but I'll tell you it's like both albums are like I don't want to sound you know extraterrestrial but they are musical journeys john um i, I do want to mention a lot of influences yeah well listen uh, who wasn't influenced though you know even uh, right. you know beatles were influenced i mean and before them chuck berry was influenced so um yeah, it's awesome. I, I did want to mention i mentioned the three members of the band but i wanted to also mention rick rosas from the first if i'm oh, pronouncing yeah. from the first album uh, he was the fourth member yeah yeah uh, he passed He's away. All over. In fact, we he passed away. We had a couple of tracks. There's a track on here um, on the new album that we didn't have any. Well, it was written a certain way, but we still kept the track, and we rewrote a song over that same track so we could have Rick on this next album on that particular song. Oh, nice, nice. Now, yeah, so, uh, you, yeah, you mentioned that uh, well, the second album is a different, uh, a different world, and it's. Basically, you know, how to survive the pandemic or what we're doing during the pandemic. Um, yeah. But it is such, it's an uplifting album. You know, dur- during the pandemic times, you know, you guys, in your songs, you gave us hope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was, and it was fun to do. It was, 
Yeah, it's a weird <laughs> time, isn't it? But hopefully, huh? uh, hopefully uh, things will get better. Yeah, I I think that I I think I was starting to see. As long as people keep, you know, keep doing the right thing, I, I, I'm I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, I went on the Beach Boys website this morning. Uh, still no definite dates. Have you heard anything about you know you guys getting about, back on uh, the road? About the Beach Boys going back? Well, on the road? we have a date on May first. I don't know when this is going to air, but we have one on May first uh, yeah. in in Texas. <laughs> yeah, this will air before. This will air before three that. Three dates. Mm-hmm. And we have three dates the following in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> And then there's one in June somewhere, but not until July. They they have July booked and August booked for the Beach Boys, mm-hmm. only in the United States. Yeah, but um, as uh, we we kind of kept that going all through the year in ho- in case something changed, we could go back to work. You know, it was ridiculous, but yeah. we we knew we weren't going to. But just in case, so um, as those dates approach in July, some will stick, some will go away. Probably, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but um, well, I, we'll I, see. Yeah, I suggest our, our listeners check out the Beach Boys uh, website, and and, I, and I'm yeah. sure um, they'll find it. They'll if find they, out where you guys. If are they want to go out like... there and, <laughs> and have I know. some fun, yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll still be wearing a mask because I, I got to tell you something. <laughs> I wore one anyway when I would go on airplanes and through the airports mm-hmm. and stuff because I just don't want to catch a cold. So to me, it's normal. I mean, yeah, I, sure. I, I saw, you know, in Japan and in China and, and a lot of the uh, Asian countries, they were hip to the mask a long time ago. <laughs> so I, I, I said, yeah, I, you know, and I used to say, are they sick? Or are they not wanting to get somebody sick? But I mm-hmm. just realized it, it serves both purposes. So... I will still wear a mask mm-hmm. even after this because I haven't been sick for a year, Steve. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. And you don't hear of too many flus either. Really. No. So, you know, no. People hardly are anybody covering got up. a normal yeah. flu this year. Right. Um, you know, that'll change because there's some um, people who don't care about that. And that's right. fine. I'll wear mine for them. Um, exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. My wife's a nurse. But, uh, My wife is a nurse. So, okay. I mean... <laughs> She can't believe, well, I don't want to get into a whole political thing, but yes, wear your masks. No. I'll put it simply, wear your masks. My wife has seen yeah. uh, too much with the trucks in the back of the hospital because they have no more room in the sure. morgue. You know, it's uh, not it's, it's not. You know, it's not anybody who says it doesn't exist, the whole world is included. You cannot, yeah. what do you have, mm-hmm. blinders on. But, but yes, you don't have to. I mean, everybody has a right to do whatever they want. I, I, I believe that. But I err on the side of safety myself because mm-hmm. um, that's that's who I am. Yeah. So that's where I go. I don't give you a hard time for not wearing one. Don't give me a hard time for wearing one, right. okay? And, I'll, and like you said, I'll I'll wear it for, for you, for the others, you know, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a community if I thing. Can, if I can spare that, and, and you can go ahead and laugh. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> you mm-hmm. can draw on it if you want. I don't sure. care. I mean, the clothes I wear, what's the difference? <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> so. so, listen, with the, with the but, Beach yeah. Boys, yeah, with the Beach Boys, John, did you um, – Get involved with them through Jan and Dean, or am I got? Do I have the timeline wrong? Or I know you were associated well, with Jan and Dean. Well, that's interesting. You said that. Yes, I did. It was because of of um, well, not because of Jan and Dean. Actually, it was because of Jeff Fosquet, who, who. Oh yes, yes, yeah, sure. A, a friend who lived in Santa Barbara. I was up in Santa Barbara and met Jeff Fosquet, Randall Kirsch, Robbie Scharf, Bill Fox, all these musicians up there who were playing in bands and. Started hanging out with them up there and playing a couple of clubs pretty regular up there, playing all British Invasion stuff. This stuff I grew up with. They they love the same. We all are the same age, so we love the same things. Mm-hmm. And Jeff Osket was about, he had just joined the Beach Boys, so that was 80 or something like that, 79, mm-hmm. 80. And, uh, and he, he, Jeff lived at the Mike Love's Foundation up there on the Mesa in Santa Barbara, and so we got to meet Mike and and so Jeff um, got me on s- some odd gigs that were Mike Love and Dean Torrance of Jan and Dean, yeah. and they did these spring break sh- things. Mike worked outside of the Beach Boys on his own forever. Mike's a workaholic, <laughs> God yeah. bless him. Yeah, yeah. And he had a side band called Mike Love and the Endless Summer Beach Band. So I was invited to go play on a couple of those days because their regular drummer, Mike Kowalski, um, was who plays with the Beach Boys as well, um, had to stay out 
with the Beach Boys wherever they were, why Mike went somewhere else. There, there was something that enabled me to be able to go and do a few shows with them. And I met Dean Torrance there. And after I was all done with that gig, he asked me, would I like to join Jan and Dean? And I looked at him and I mean, I was living my Dodson B210. And I said, yeah, I said, are you going to pay me for this? <laughs> yeah. Can I pay you guys? I haven't been doing anything musical. I was, you know, working in a shampoo factory, capping, you know, capping bottles for nature's gatorable cosmetics. So, um, yeah, they got, yeah, they got I, and, and, and so I ended up joining Jan and Dean. And then left that for a long time, didn't play with anybody for a long time, had a had a marriage go south, but have two great kids from that marriage, so that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And um, and then after that divorce, I, I had a friend, Chris Oakland, who said, you need to get, don't you know anybody in the business? <laughs> so I, I, said, I guess I do. <laughs> I don't know if their phone numbers still work, but I put the word out there. Anyway, I got a call to sub for... Uh, for somebody in the Beach Boys, and so I went out, and everybody wanted me to sub. So I played guitar, keyboards, and uh, drums with these guys. And I never wanted to take the gig permanently because I would never see my kids. But then yeah. uh, things changed. Blah 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 blah. I ended up taking the gig. Was their piano player for seven years. Then they switched me to drums, and and now I've been off a year. It was a nice year off, by the way, even though I don't like the reason I had it. Yeah. Me the I, year off. I think a lot of people... I don't like the reason. Yeah, a lot of people caught right. up on a lot of things that they didn't don't get a chance to do. Yeah. This well, year. and I, I just had been on the road for... Mm -hmm. And we did do 187 shows a year. Add travel days into that. I'm gone 80% oh, wow. of my year. So it was really mm -hmm. nice for Vicky and I and Will and just... Everything. It was a nice reset, but I, I'm done with the reset. I'm ready to go back to yeah, work. Sure. Everybody knows that. I want to. And we, uh, if, yeah, see if, it, if that happens. If you don't mind, John, I, I want to read a couple of reviews of you playing for the Beach Boys. Uh, and guys, if you have not seen the Beach Boys in concert, first of all, do it when it happens again. And one of the most energetic guys on stage is the cool John Castle. So here's. A couple, a couple things. <clears throat> excuse me, from the Sioux City Journal about one of your shows. The MVP of the night was drummer John Cowsill, who managed to keep the energy high and the beat infectious. He blazed a trail through those toe tappers and didn't look like he wanted to stop. I, I love when you take vocals too, John. I mean, you, you just really get the crowd going. Not that the rest of the band doesn't, of course, you know. But when you do "Darling" and a "Wild Honey," I mean. Here's another one from the Newport Daily News. This is Mike Love said this. John is the most talented drummer, drummer we've had, and he is a great singer, part of the backbone of the group. He really, he really cares about the music. You can't fake that from Mike Love. So the words, I totally agree with John, because I've seen you guys now for quite a few times. You're just, uh, you just add so much to the band. Thank you so much. No, no, truly. <laughs> I, just, I truly. love to play. So uh, yeah, we got a shows. great band out there. Everybody's just, we just, uh, it's a great traveling group of people. So to get on stage and perform one of my favorite catalogs, and it's just uh, an amazing thing yeah. that I've gotten to do. And uh, it's my other favorite band. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, right. I haven't yeah. done a lot in my life. I haven't played with a zillion different people or anything. Basically my family and a, Jan and Dean, Dwight Twilley, uh, whatever. You know, I, I, my roster is not big, so people, uh, my phone doesn't ring a lot, but I, I have a gig, it's and a, it was great, and I'm perfect for this band because I like to play the way the records were made, and mm -hmm. and uh, and I mean it every night, and I, I have a good work ethic, as does Mike Love. Mike Love and our work, work ethics are right in a line. It's like mm -hmm. you give 150% on the stage. You can be a dope after you get off. But not, <laughs> right. not, yeah, not between well, the lines. We're dopey on stage too, but in a good way. <laughs> yeah. But um, um, 
it's just a, it's like I say, I can look at my hands and I can just get giddy knowing I got two sticks in my hands and somebody. <laughs> and I got the Beach Boys in front of me. Fun up there, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. Seriously. I mean, yes, we get tired. Some days you don't want to go up, but those are rare and far in between. Mm-hmm. And once you're up there, you don't care. You just, yeah. you're there. You, I mean, some some in some bands they they complain about you know oh man why are we doing a long set it's like man give me them all by the <laughs> this we is did what the you do anniversary yeah. by the end of that yeah. we were doing seventy songs a night I had to get gloves because I was getting chewed up but man I loved it I was in good shape <laughs> yeah, yeah, John you know congratulations on being just a, a couple two or three people from Mike Love's band that were chosen to to tour with the fiftieth anniversary I mean. Kudos yeah, I didn't to know you. that was going to happen because I know Mike D'Amico and I, I know all, we, we're fr- all friends to, with Brian's guys and they're friends of ours. And, and, but I definitely thought Brian was going to take his band. Mm-hmm. And it was Mike mm-hmm. who said, well, I want to bring a couple of my guys. I want to bring Council and this guy. And so, you know, Mike D'Amico and I are saying, oh, man, we'll be two drummers on stage. That could be cool. We had drum sets, matching drum sets made, these mm-hmm. blue glass glitter Ludwig kits. We both have them. <laughs> and he was coming over to my house to tell me something. We were going to rehearse with two kits. I said, well, if you've never played with another drummer, which he hadn't at the time, uh, I said, well, let's work that out, you know, so so it, we sound good. Anyway, he showed up at my house um, one day and just had boo-boo face. He says, good news and bad news. I said, oh, man, mm-hmm. come in. Come in the house. What's, what's the bad news? <laughs> yeah. No, I said, I said, what's the good news? And he says, you're going to be drumming. I said, bad news. He says, well, I'm not. I uh, said, what? Because yeah. we, we, well, we were both sitting at the table. He says, well, they offered me the bass position. Mm-hmm. And I looked at him. I said, can you play bass? Yeah, and he says, "Oh yeah, I play bass. I play because he's from the Wonderments with Darian Sahanaja. Super band, yeah, super band. Oh God, just they're so great. Well, that's how Brian Brian heard them and be, had them be their band. Mm-hmm. Um, so Mike's sitting here. You can play bass. I said, then take it. <laughs> you yeah. know, we'll give you the drums. You know, so he did take the bass player. What a great bass player! Just an all round great musician, Mike D'Amico. Let me mm-hmm. just tell you." And he played bass, and I was the drummer, and I just wish we were next to each other. They put a percussionist in between us. <laughs> it was like, no, <laughs> I want the bass player next to me, always. But Paul and Ringo uh, were always near each and other. He got to play drums during that tour, too. I, I got off the kit and made sure he played, too. And mm-hmm. cool. Hey, had you, but, met, had you met Brian and Al Jardine, for that matter, before the 50th anniversary tour? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, we, okay. In 1966, we played Yankee Stadium together. Oh, all right. Beach Boys wow. headlined it. How cool and that was that? with the McCoys, the Gentrys, uh, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, Etta James, um, Holy the Association, the Birds. Uh, just everybody played this this huge festival. But my brother Bill and Brian were really close friends. Probably not good for each other. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> um, but we're very good friends, and... I didn't know Al, G, uh, Al Jardine or Mike or those guys because I'm much younger than all of those mm-hmm, guys. But, sure. but we we knew who they were, and they, I, but Bill was really the one who was friends with them. And but I would met Brian. It's funny, funny thing. I met him at the Troubadour one night, and I don't even know if he remembers it. But we were the Cowsills playing um, new material, and we. We went through the phase where, no, we're not playing our old stuff, you know, yeah. stupid stuff like that. But we said, no, we're not doing that. And so we were playing the Troubadour, and we get on stage, and we start play, doing our set, and there's somebody heckling us in the crowd, and he's sl- slamming the table, Indian Lake, Indian Lake. And my brother Bob says, no, nah, man, we're not doing India Lake, especially of all the songs, we're not doing India Lake. And <laughs> You got to um, rub that and in. The night went on, and this guy's <laughs> just heckling us, and... We didn't know it was Brian Wilson because he, <laughs> he was huge, big beard. We, you know, and there was no social media, and nobody knows Holy what anybody smokes, looks like yeah. anymore. So he was asking for Indian Lake, which today is his still his favorite Cowsill song ever, and uh, <laughs> it's just hilarious because during the 50th anniversary, I'm on Brian's bus with him, and it comes on, and yeah, man, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we recorded "Do It Again" in the studio, and he he knows Bill so well. He 
sees my face and he sees Billy, so he knows I'm Cowsill. But he just kept calling me Drummer, and everybody says, "Brian, you know him. It's John Cowsill." I said, "Leave him alone. I want to be called Drummer." <laughs> <laughs> Whatever Brian wants to but, call me is cool. <laughs> oh, Brian, he was great. It, yeah. it was great. That was a fun tour for for us guys, you know, the musicians for yeah. sure. Yeah, how was Brian? And, uh, it he... was it was great to see them all down yeah. in front of me singing like they did. And mm. we got even got to re-record uh, Do It Again as a promotional thing at Ocean Way, and Brian conducted the whole session. It was just so much fun, man. That's – I – um let me see. I, I want to put this delicately. Is, is Brian cool? You know, can you talk to him and – you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a, a – a, a, from what I hear, he's yeah, got a good, good sense of humor. Days, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, he has some health issues, but – Yes, of but, course. Like he'd be sleeping in his dressing room, and I'd be I, I'd go in there if I wanted quiet because I knew it was going to be quiet in there because nobody bugs him, and I was allowed to go in there and with Jeff and and Brian. Mm-hmm. And well, that's cool to hear. And uh, yeah. w- one day I was walking by him. <laughs> this is how much he loves Indian Lake. He's just leaning against the wall. His eyes are closed, and I walked by. And as soon as I walked by, he goes. <laughs> so Brian is Brian is Brian he's is very awesome. cool. Yeah, we love him. All right, now a layman a layman's question from me. Say you guys, your, your Beach Boy, you have a show at eight o'clock. What time do you guys get there for sound check and everything? It's a long day, well, right? I travel with. I always travel with the crew because they're mm-hmm. my friends, and they right. And I'm I, I like to be active, and plus I don't have a drum tech, so and I mean they'll assign somebody to do the drums, but. I'm such a control freak that uh-huh. I want them to be the exact way I want them, and I don't have a drum tech. They don't want to ha- give me a drum tech for just that gig and pay somebody for just that gig. So I end up doing it and happily do it. Yeah, um, it keeps me active, and so I'll load in at two o'clock. <sighs> be set up wow. by three goof around until the band shows up yeah then we'll do a, a line check or a sound check if we're carrying production which we mostly do we don't have to have a sound check we just do a line check mm-hmm. um but i get there early i'm there all day usually yeah i i have a i have a friend of mine john and he's in a, a, a small a tribute band a genesis peter gabriel era genesis tribute band Ooh, you know wow. they, well they play small clubs you know and he says after his gig, and now, like I said, they play to maybe 50, 100, sometimes, you know, 750. But he said he, he is so wound up after a gig, he, he does, cannot get to sleep. And he's a teacher, and he usually has to go to <laughs> teach the next day. Yeah. Do you find yeah, that, yeah. too? It's a tough to wind down? Oh, after absolutely. Yeah, right? Down. Yeah. I mean, you've just shot your wad. And, yeah. you know, the show doesn't get more calm. It gets more exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the adrenaline so, is like... By the time I, I get off, um, it's, uh, yeah, I'm ready yeah. to. Yeah, so it's a long, long day for, and it, I, I think some people just think, okay, 8 o'clock, there they are, and they're off at 11, you know, and that's their three-hour spot. Forget it, right? That's yeah. like, yeah. All right, now, no. John, uh, on the show here, we have many faithful listeners from my hometown of North Bergen, New Jersey. And oh yay, North Bergen! North, you, you, you know that we played North Bergen High School yes. in the early '60s, correct? Absolutely. I mean, you and your family. You yeah, sh- man. We share a mutual friend. His name is Ira Wolf, one of the greatest guys in yeah. the world. Can you give us, uh, well, our, all our listeners, but especially our North Bergen faithful, the Cowsills' history in North Bergen? Oh yeah, man. Oh, God, it was just the best of, of times because I was probably eight eight going on nine and we'd drive from Newport to right across the bridge in Palisades. They'd have the Palisades motel and we would stay at that motel. And I don't know how we ended up playing at that high school, but it, it was through friends. Maybe my through Ira? Or my dad knew. Maybe Ira Wolf? Anyway. Uh, well, Ira Wolf, yes. And, and Maybe Biggie Corn and mm-hmm. they were best friends and, just somehow it, it it worked out. They were we were always going over to New Jersey, mm-hmm. 
and in Palisades, which is great because Palisades amusement park swings all day and after dark, <laughs> ride the coaster, get cool in the waves at the pool, you'll have fun. So come on over, John. <laughs> John, I have right? to I have to interrupt you, John. As, as I speak, I'm, I'm doing this from my home in Fort Lee. I'm literally seven minutes from where Palisades Park used to be. So I hear you. I used oh to... <laughs> God, I love that. We may have crossed paths. Who knows? <laughs> oh man, I loved park. going uh, there. Oh, the best. That was great. But anyway, so we ended up at North Bergen High School and playing their dances. Mm -hmm. And across the street on the corner was the Bruins Bowl, which um, was a old, uh, which was a diner that yeah. the kids after school would go to. The and Great Kofi Bruins and Bowl, yeah. Kofi and <laughs> all the girls there. And I'd sit at that counter, and Charlie and Mary, who owned it and run it, we would just always be there. And they had the Cokes with the the pewter bottoms, the the coney kind of cokes. Uh, She'd make yep. us cherry cokes. They'd fill my bag with Drake cakes and <laughs> ding dongs and uh, oh, it's just it's, such a great yeah. time. And playing that that school, I just remember playing the gymnasium all the time. Mm -hmm. North Bergen High School, man. I still see the whole big grassy area all outside the whole area. If they haven't changed, it's the same. Yeah, it's still. I don't yeah. know if it is or not. It is. Yeah, it's the same. Time. They have a few more trees out there now too. But yes, it's it's basically looking yeah, the same. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty treeless on on the lawn there yeah. in the front. But um, but yeah, I'll never forget that. And just became friends with the whole whole community there, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, and how did you become yeah, friends with just, Ira? By the way, what? How what? How did your family become friends with Ira? He was there at the school. I, and then he, you he met him there, okay. He Corn and introduced yes. us, and okay. he just became another family member, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny, because we lost touch for so long. I'm in touch with him now, pretty regular, Ira and I yeah. talk. Mm -hmm. And he's just such a lovely man. He, <laughs> he just, is, I'll, and I'll helpful, tell you, John. you know, because I had a shoulder replacement, so he's giving me all the advice. And, you know, mm -hmm. he knows the guys who invented the shoulder operations and the rotator cuffs and all oh. the surgeries that they do. He's yep. such a uh, source of knowledge and Yep. Just, just a caring human being, and yep. I'm so glad to be back in touch with him mm. as well. You know, and I'm still in touch with Biggie and and Ira. Those yeah. those two guys, they 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 were there with us at the beginning, and they've seen it all. And I haven't seen Ira still. Yeah, I was going to see him when I came to play the Bergen Pack Center um, just last year, but it, obviously the pandemic canceled yep. everything. I yep. always play the Bergen Pack Center. He was going to come. Yeah, he always, he always gives me a call. He, he has seen my other three siblings, but he has not seen me yeah. yet. Yep. And, uh, he always gives me a call. And he, and he talked about, you know, seeing you at Bergen Pack. But, you know, before we wind it up, I have to share this great story about Ira and North Bergen. And I... <clears throat> I'm, I'm a retired teacher in North Bergen, but before that I was yeah a, you are <laughs> I was a student at North Bergen High School and I played football, and Ira was the football team's trainer as well. I mean, a one top of the line trainer, the greatest guy. Anyway, yeah, before practice every day, we'd go into the trainer's room, and Ira had a, a record player. Of course, everything was vinyl then, which was cool with me, and he had all cool. Yeah, right. He had Cream, all the cool albums. And so we'd be taking our turn, getting our ankles taped on the table like a like a, an assembly line, and everybody'd be boisterous and talking and blah blah blah. Whenever the Cal Sills live in concert came on, Ira would say, "Cal Sills, everybody," and that meant we had to lower our voices. We could talk, but we could, <laughs> but we couldn't be louder than the Cal Sills. <laughs> And that was the rule. And that was so cool. I keep being in the oh middle my of God. It, it just it was like rote. You know, he would just be taping angles, councils everybody, and whoo, the volume in the room goes down. Oh, it was, that is so funny. It was disrespectful oh, to talk cute. over his friends. Oh my yeah. god. It was disrespectful to talk over his friends. So <laughs> so that was Steve, so was yeah, a, you taught at North Bergen. That's Awesome. So you know the school. Oh, yeah. I went to North oh, Bergen High School. It's like, welcome back, Cotter. I, I, I taught mostly yeah, eighth grade in the elementary schools, but whenever a high school t English teacher would go on sabbatical or, you know, a, a maternity leave, I would go up and teach for that year. But anyway, yeah, it was it's something. That's great. That's great. Now, great, great, you, great, great. I remember it was a peanut stand. All these kids made posters of all the peanuts characters. One year it was a rat fink theme. <laughs> oh, rat God. fink. I, and oh. as a kid, I'm a oh, kid. I love this stuff. We They gave us the poster. We put them in our bedrooms. Oh, my God, yeah. man. 
Great, great, uh, it was great a, That was a great time of life, mm-hmm. i got to say. Before we got famous, it was the best. Yeah. Now, before we yeah. wrap it up, um, yep. I, I must recommend uh, the documentary the Family Band, The Cow Still Story. And, and, oh, by Louise Paul Anker, uh, yeah. Louise yeah. Paul Anker. Uh, I mean, it, it, I loved it, John, but it was certainly a bittersweet journey, I'm sure, especially for you. Um, uh, how really, you feel I afterwards? never wanted them to make I didn't want that to be made but mm. the other guys wanted it to be made so what am I going to do <laughs> yeah I mean was it was it a cathartic thing did you feel okay after it did, are you glad you did it or you, it, you, it's you, fine it's it, out yeah. there it's lovely it it, it 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 you know what it really did was <laughs> I knew people who saw it who knew me because I, I, I travel all the time and I'd go to these venues and to, to load in and set up my stuff. And, and guys who I knew for years already are looking at me differently and they're walking towards me like I need a hug or something. I said, oh, <laughs> shit, you yeah. saw the documentary, didn't you? Yeah. Go away. Mm-hmm. Stop. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Leave me alone. <laughs> I, I, I give you all the credit in the world for going through that, John. And, and your siblings. I mean, your whole your whole family. It's, it's There was no choice, man. You, had, yeah. you can't help but keep going forward. So, yeah. well, <laughs> And I'm, uh, I'm, look where I am today. I'm sitting in my nice house and I guess I had to go through everything we had to go through to get here Mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know the rules of of that but it's all good but i do want to i do want to throw a pitch for my siblings bob susan and paul have a new album out the cow is coming out is this uh, the the deck side silhouettes or or was that no this is called um uh, rhythm of the world okay yes they just finished it oh good they did finish it and, and and everybody's waiting to release their things. We don't know how, how or when, but mm-hmm. I just wanted to make sure that you knew. In addition to the new Action Skulls album that's coming out called From a Running Horse, mm-hmm. the councils have a new album coming out as well. I am not participating in it, but I, I think I'm on some acapella stuff they did. I, I think, yeah. But you're going to yeah. love it. They're great and funny and engaging, and I, I, um, that's that. I... I um... I think I was thinking of there was an EP or something from a few years ago of which you were on too. I think it was called the Dark Side Silhouettes. I checked it out on YouTube. Anyway, I think maybe what is well, the Dark Side Silhouettes? I've never yeah, heard of that. You did, uh, or, or there was the um, Rain in the Park and other things, a cappella, and maybe two or three other songs. Maybe it was just you know something on YouTube. I don't know. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, News to me, uh, I'm not on social media, so I don't yeah. know anything. I'm not Instagram. I don't Twitter. I don't Facebook. I don't. If you don't have my phone number, or email. I really don't talk. So, John, you're not you're not missing too much, John, by not going on uh, social media. <laughs> it's just so no, damn just negative. It. It's no, just no, overwhelming, it's... and I have better things to do with my mm-hmm. time. And and I I love it for people who love to do that. I, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just I don't have a reason for it yeah. you know i might have to go on because we have an album coming out and bill and vicky are saying john you gotta open your facebook account again just for you know let people know we have product coming out and stuff you know mm-hmm. I, i'm pretty private i don't do podcasts usually but because i asked me to do this one yeah I did this you know one, i did one for billy prine john prine's brother but i usually don't do them because i, I just don't Usually do this. Well, I, I, I appreciate Steve, it so much. It was it was it was good to do this with you because you're North Bergen and I love <laughs> North Bergen. That's great. You know, I'll tell you, being, we're going to come full circle. I, your your second album now, of course, from Running Horse is is coming out in three months. You said around there. Yeah, in about three or four yeah. months. Yeah, but from Hopefully. a different world, I I had emailed you and I asked if you could choose a nice song for us to close out with. And uh, yeah. you chose "You Heal My Soul." Could you tell us about that one? Yeah. Oh God, when Bill sent that to me, first of all, I just love Bill Mummy and his voice. It's that Randy Newmanish kind of soulful. He just has that gorgeous voice, and he writes so well in that piano thing, and it just moved me so much. I, we couldn't wait to put backgrounds on there, Vicky and I, and we've got a choir in the court. It's just, it's just. It's beautiful. So emotes so much to me and just calms me down. And I just love that song so much. So So from from John Calsill to his many millions of fans, John, I can't thank you enough, like you said. I mean, 
you don't do interviews often, and I, I you're a great, yeah. great guy, and it's been such a pleasure speaking with you. I, I can't thank you enough, John. And, and you too, Steve. Absolutely, my pleasure. Good health and, to you uh, and the I'll family. See you down the road there when I come play Bergen Pack Center, maybe. Absolutely, come with Ira. I'll be with Ira. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, John. Fantastic. Take Bye, care, everybody. Later. Bye. Some days I don't know what I'm gonna do Sometimes everything I learn seems untrue Nothing right now adds up to too much Till I see your smile and feel your sweet touch You heal my soul, you heal my soul Deep in my heart, your love keeps me whole Darling I've never been one of the religious kind I've looked to nature for my peace of mind She's never lied, never once been untrue I don't trust the men telling me what to do You heal my soul, my soul, my soul Deep in my heart, your love keeps me whole Darling Waiting with you is forever I will be sorrowful never, never, never You heal my soul, you heal my soul Deep in my heart your love keeps me whole Darling, you heal my soul Someday I know these hard times will pass Dear friends and family will walk the green grass Time it will come when we all gather close And you are the one that I love and thank most You heal my soul, you heal my soul Deep in my heart, your love keeps me whole 